In this exercise, we are going to find the equation of the plane tangent to the graph of xy plus x squared z plus sine of y minus z equals 6 at the point 2, 1, 1, which lives on the graph of this equation. Then we will write down the equation of the line which is perpendicular to that plane through that point. We often call that the normal line. So we'll do two exercises in this video. All right, the thing is, the equation that we are given is it's just an equation relating x, y, and z. It's not a function. Let me put up a picture of what the set of points, x, y, and z, which make this equation true, looks like. So we're looking at something which is a, a visualization of a set of points in three-dimensional space. The set of points which, when you plug them into this equation, satisfy that the x-coordinate times the y-coordinate plus the x-coordinate squared times z plus sine of y minus z equals 6. Okay. There are different approaches to writing tangent planes in multivariable calculus, and in this particular situation, only one is appropriate. We do not have a function here that we can try to write down what you might think of as a linearization for. So we are going to take the only good way to uh, write down a tangent plane equation and use it here. And that is, we want to take this equation and reconceptualize it as the level surface of a function of three variables. I'm going to give that function a name. I like to call it h, that's just my particular convention. So let h of x, y, and z, what I need to do with my function is make sure I capture everything to do with the variables. So um, if there were x, y, z terms on both sides of the equation, I would want to move them all onto one side of the equation. It's okay if there are constants remaining on the other side, that's not a problem. In this particular equation, our x, y, and z terms are all grouped together on the left-hand side, so we'll just set h of x, y, and z equal to that left-hand side. So we'll say it's x, y plus x squared z plus sine y minus z. Why have I done this? Our equation is now viewed as the level set for this function. It's the level set h equals 6. Let me just write that down. Our equation is a level set in the domain of this function. Oh, my marker is giving out on me. So this picture we have in XYZ space showing the set of points that make it true, that XY plus X squared Z plus sine of Y minus Z equals six. We're now thinking that this is a snapshot of the domain of this function H. So we're not looking at a graph of H, we are looking at a level set in its domain. This is a great thing to have set up because we have knowledge of how the gradient of H relates to its level sets. In particular, the gradient of h at the point 2, 1, 1 will be perpendicular to the level set h equals 6, which means it's perpendicular to any plane tangent to that level set. Okay, I'll write that down too. Thus, the gradient of h at 2, 1, 1 is perpendicular to our equation uh, at 2, 1, 1. I'm going to write the surface at 2, 1, 1. and therefore perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the tangent plane. That means that we need to find the gradient of h at 2, 1, 1. So I'm just going to do a vector of partial derivatives, plug in 2, 1, 1. That gives us the orthogonal vector to the plane we need. We have the orthogonal vector. We have a point on the plane. Then we will use the vector form for the tangent plane to write down the tangent plane, expand it, and end up with the general form for the plane. Let me pause for a moment if you'd like to catch up and digest this idea. Moving right along, let's compute the gradient of h at the point 2, 1, 1. To do that, we need to take the partial derivative of this right-hand side here with respect to x, then y, then z. So if I take the partial derivative with respect to x, we get y plus 2xz. You might 
not like that I wrote down X, Y, and Z in generality here on the right-hand side, whereas on the left-hand side, I put in the specific values two, one, and one. I'll show you how to make this an actual true statement at the end. Okay, so I'm not, not done. Let's take the partial derivative with respect to y. We'll have x plus cosine of y minus z. And then with respect to z, we will have x squared plus cosine of y minus z times negative 1 because of the chain rule here. So it's negative z inside. We need to pick up a factor of negative 1. Let's write x squared minus cosine of y minus z. Okay, the comment I made a second ago was, was saying that you shouldn't say this one specific vector is equal to this formula in terms of general x, y, and z. So I'm going to put an evaluation bar here to indicate that I intend for this vector to be evaluated at the point 2, 1, 1. All right, let's do that. When y is 1, x is 2, and z is 1, we get 1 plus 4 is 5. And then x is 2. y and z are both 1, so y minus z is 0. 2 plus cosine of 0 is 2 plus 1. So make sure you know that, that cosine of 0 is 1. And then we have 2 squared minus cosine of 0, so that's going to be 4 minus 1 is 3. So the vector orthogonal to our tangent plane at the point 2, 1, 1 is the vector 5, 3, 3. Let me pause here. And in this pause, I would like for you to see if you remember how to write down the equation of a plane as a vector dot product. I'm going to erase most of this so that we have enough room to finish the problem. We are now ready to write down the equation of our plane. We don't need to talk about h anymore. What we wanted to get from that function h is this vector, which is orthogonal to our plane. In order to write down a plane, all you need is a point on the plane, which we were given at the start, the point 2, 1, 1, and the orthogonal sense of direction, which we can now characterize as 5, 3, 3. With that information, we can use this vector dot product formulation in order to say what all points x, y, z on the plane have to satisfy then we will expand that to write it in general form. Okay, so let me just revisit that vector dot product formulation. N is perpendicular to the plane. X, Y, Z, this vector here represents the coordinates of any point on the plane. We're going to subtract from that our known point like this. Let me sketch a quick diagram of what's going on. I really like the geometry of this equation. Let me first finish the equation. This dot product is going to be zero. What's happening here is let's say this is our plane with orthogonal vector n. Oh, I hope this is this tilt is going to be okay for my picture. Let's put the origin here. So say this is x, y, z. This picture doesn't need to be drawn to scale. The geometry will be communicated through the diagram, even if my plane is actually tilted differently. Okay, I said that this x, y, z triple represents the coordinates of a point on the plane. So let's say that that point on the plane is here. So just take a representative point on the plane. To write the coordinates of that point as a vector is really to identify the position vector for this point, which starts at the origin and ends at that point. So this vector here is the vector x, y, z. P is also on the plane. Let me just put that here. The point P is the point 2, 1, 1. The vector 2, 1, 1 is the position vector that starts at the origin and points at P. I'm not totally happy with what I just said. Let me revisit that. A vector is a, a length and a sense of direction. It doesn't matter where you put it in space. But what I'm saying is that if you have the position vector for point P, we can think of that as the vector that starts at the origin and ends at P. So this vector I'm going to identify as the vector 2, 1, 1. What happens now is if you do this vector minus that one, you create this vector, which is actually flat on the plane. Right, so using the tail to head addition law for vectors, this vector plus that one is this vector. 
Uh, it looks, you know, with this flat picture, it almost looks like it's coming out of the plane. So please believe that this vector lies flat on this plane, which means it's perpendicular to this vector n. But this equation says more, and actually it needs to. And that is, if x, y, z is any point not on the plane, say it's like down here, just to exaggerate, and put it like way beneath this plane, then the, the vector I would create when I did the vector difference of this x, y, z minus this p, don't want to overcrowd this picture. Let me try to do this kind of light. Okay, say I've got a point not on the plane, and I take the difference of this point and p. I create a vector which, to me in this diagram, looks like it opens up an obtuse angle with n, so their dot product would not be zero. So the dot product of this vector and n is only zero if this corresponds to a point on the plane. Okay, I didn't actually intend to go back through that in this exercise, but I just kind of wanted to revisit it after writing down this equation. We're done. We just need to now fill in the details. So n itself is 5, 3, 3. X minus the vector, x, y, z minus the vector 2, 1, 1 is going to look like x minus 2, y minus 1, z minus 1. This dot product is 0, so now you expand it and you get 5x minus 10 plus 3y minus 3 plus 3z minus 3 is 0. And then traditionally we're going to group x, y, and z on the left. So 5x plus 3y plus 3z equals 16. Okay, this is the equation of the plane that we were looking for, but we also want to find the line perpendicular to this plane passing through the point P. Let me give you a moment to pause, write this down, and also see if you can go ahead and solve that problem, and I'll come back and show you how to do it in case you got stuck. We have everything we need to write down the equation of this line immediately. For a plane, you need a point and a perpendicular sense of direction. For a line, you need a point and a parallel sense of direction. Our sense of direction here is the one orthogonal to the plane, so we have that sense of direction. It's, it's this vector n. Okay, so this line through P perpendicular to this plane is going to be parallel to this vector n I wrote over here. So it's this line. We have our point. We have our direction vector. Let's proceed. So our line parametrized like this, it's going to be the point 2, 1, 1 plus T times the sense of direction, which is 5, 3, 3. And I will leave it like that. No, I'll take it one step further and then I'll leave it like that. So if you wanted to, you could leave it this way. This is what I often do. Or you might write 2 plus 5t, giving um, concise descriptions for each component x, y, and z. So 1 plus 3t, 1 plus 3t. So here we can say that for this line, x is 2 plus 5t y is 1 plus 3t, and actually so is z. All right, that wraps up this exercise.